Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. A few weeks ago, I was the subject of a parody video by Fake DeCastro, also known as Mayor TV. If you haven't seen that yet, click on the card above to go watch it. And towards the end of that video, he jokingly played this demented version of Happy Birthday. <laughs> and it was too good to pass up, so I decided to turn it into a virtual jam slash collaboration of sorts. Now I'm going to add a tutorial segment as well and show you how I came up with the chords to go with that wild <laughs> melody. As with my other lesson videos, you will see my guitar on one part of the screen and the accompanying tab in the other part. And if you want your own copy of the tab as well as the backing track used in this video, the PDF and Guitar Pro version of the tab, as well as the MP3 version of the backing track, will be available on my website, perfectodecastro.com slash store, for only $2.99. Sales from my web store help me keep making these videos for all of you to enjoy. So thank you in advance for all your support. Okay, let's start with the melody. For those of you with sharp eyes, you'll probably notice that Fake DeCastro plays everything two frets higher and that is because he is tuned down. I transcribed and notated everything in standard tuning that way you don't have to retune your guitar just to be able to play with it. He also played everything in somewhat free time so for the purpose of consistency and transcribing I adopted a 3-4 time for this uh, transcription. Okay let's start with the opening melody. <laughs> So my approach here was to assign a chord to each quarter note beat. And probably the simplest way to assign a chord is to treat each note as a root of the chord. So that will sound like this. B, A, E flat, D. It's even more jarring than the, than, than the melody. Actually sounds uh, late romantic, early impressionistic, uh, you know, as far as the chord progression goes. You can also treat the note as the third of the chord. So in this case, B is the third of G, and then A is the third of F, and then uh, E flat or D sharp is the third of B, and then D is the third of B flat. So that will sound like... So slightly less jarring, but this this is still uh, a little difficult to, to digest. It still has that Shostakovich feel to it, so I don't think that's what I was shooting for. Now, if you're lost with me talking about thirds and roots and fifths and all that, make sure to check out my Music Theory for Guitarists video lesson. Part 4 is all about chord building, and part 4.5 is all about extended chords. So I highly suggest that you watch those first. That way you are up to speed with all the terms that I am throwing out in this video. Now let's take a close look at the melody again. Out of the four notes, three of them A, B, D, that can be part of D major or that can be part of G major. Okay, now since I like the sound of B as the third, let's go with G major. So that helped me decide on a key. So I'm going to base everything pretty much around 
G major. And all the notes that are not part of G major, we will treat those as either passing notes or a modulation. So in G major, I can go G, then A is the third of F sharp, so I can go F sharp minor, right? And then E flat is a little tricky, it's not part of G major, so I can do maybe a C minor, right? And then for D, I can either go D chord, or I can either go B minor, right? So let's listen to how that works. G, F sharp minor, C minor, B minor. That actually sounds a lot better than what we were coming up earlier. I mean, compare it, right, to easier on the ears. Though I still feel that we could still make this sound a little bit better. Now one tip that I can give you guys at this point is to start using extended chords or chord extensions to tame a wildly dissonant melody. So for G I'm going to use a major 7 voicing. The major 7 is also known as the national chord of OPM. And then for F sharp, minor, maybe a F sharp minor 7. Okay. Then for C minor, uh, C minor 7. And then B minor 7. Yeah. Okay, so I'm still not convinced about this solution. So I'm going to take a page out of my counterpoint studies and I will start thinking in terms of voices instead of chord blocks. Okay. And I feel like I want to keep the lowest voice, the bass, moving in the same direction and same motion. So we have G major 7, F sharp minor 7. And the next note stepwise going down is F. And that might work because we have uh, E flat, which is the flat 7 of F. So that can work. And since this goes down to D, Let's go to E, and this turns it into a minor 7 as well. So, G major 7, F sharp minor 7, F minor 7, E minor 7. And if we take a look at the middle voice, that also moves down direction-wise. So... So we'll go with that. Now the next melody goes. Oh. Okay, so we started on G, ended on E minor seven. Let's go to the fourth up from G. So that will be C major seven. So it's it's almost like a typical pop song. <laughs> And I think I'm going to keep the same stepwise movement uh, in the bass. So C, B, B flat, A. C major 7, B minor 7. So A flat is the flat 7 of B flat, that works out. But instead of using a minor 7 chord, I always think I'll use a dominant 7 chord. If I use an A minor 7, so it sounds a little too pretty, so I think I'll use an A minor 7 flat 5. Okay, It's a little more interesting sounding and it sort of hints that there is more to come. So now that sounds like... Let's move on to the next part of the melody, which is probably the wildest interval-wise. So we go, oh, so A, A, B flat, okay, so that's a uh, flat nine distance, 
Okay, so I think I'm gonna apply another counterpoint move. We were moving chromatically earlier. C, B, B flat, A. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip the next chromatic note, which is A flat, and go straight to G. That way, when we land on the next quarter note, I am going to change direction and move up. All right? So there's that. So... Check this out. <laughs> so this is a loose interpretation of a cambiata, which is to skip and then move in the opposite direction stepwise. So I skip and change direction stepwise. So the resulting chord will be, this is a G6-9 into an A-flat-9. If I treated this as a root, it's not as effective. As I mentioned earlier, use chord extensions to tame the sound of a wildly dissonant melody. Now the melody goes. Ah. <laughs> now there isn't even a definitive key signature at play here. So I'm just going to treat it like a bunch of chromatic notes. Now that the chromaticism has moved to the top voice, to counter that, I will use wide interval jumps in the bottom voice or in the bass voices. And a good option here would be the typical cycle of fifths progression that you hear in a lot of jazz standards. Okay, so G6-9 to A-flat-9 to D-flat-dominant ninth to G7. Like uh, C7 at 11. Let's do that. To F sharp 13. Okay. So I kept the cycle of fifths progression, but moved through it. So I kept the cycle of fifths progression, but moved down stepwise to keep the chromatic theme. So. And that sounds like... <laughs> okay, now we're in the home stretch. The last part of the melody is... Now the bulk of those notes belong to G major, which works out quite nicely. So we get to bookend the whole arrangement in the key of G. So we have E flat, D, A, C, B, right? So our outside note is again E flat. Technically, I can use the same chord that we landed on earlier, F sharp 13, but where's the fun in that? So I'm going to recycle one of the chords that we used at the very beginning, which is F minor seven, right? Leading to E minor seven. I think it's too early to go to the dominant, which is D. So I'm not. I'm going to delay that dominant a little bit. So I think a nice ending touch would be to have the bass line still move in chromatic steps, but this time going up from E. So here we go. A is the third of F, and let's do major seven. I like that. And then the next note is C over F sharp, that's a flat five. So we could do a F sharp minor seven flat five, or you can think of it as a D seven over F sharp. That works. And let's end on G major seven. <laughs> there you go. Wrapped up nice and tidy. And for extra jazz points, you can actually end on G major 7 sharp 11.
Okay, I'm going to play through the whole thing again, and the tab that you will see on screen is the chord melody arrangement. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this fun little video and this quick insight into how I add chords to standalone melody lines. If you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up like, feel free to share it with your friends, and do subscribe if you haven't yet. And of course, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I read every single one. And finally, I'd like to thank Mayor TV for always putting out fun and entertaining content that we all enjoy. Okay, till next time, you all know the drill. Practice makes... Perfecto.